So talk away. Did everybody bring their favorite beverage? Water. They, they discourage drinking alcohol at work there, Scott? They're funny about that. They don't they completely don't. prohibit it like uh, Bayer did, but uh, <clears throat> they've got to have a VP sign off for events that include that. If you owned a winery, it would can be a completely different situation. Yeah, but or distillery. Jim Dudmead, you got home all right? I did. It was pretty hot, but I got home. Yeah. How about you? Got home. We we uh, stayed till Monday, and came home, and uh, they were talking about big storms in Ohio at the end of the day. So we beat that and. All was well. <clears throat> so Jerry is not coming today? No, he no. wasn't sure if he was going to be able to make it on or not. I think we should announce that we have Quinn online tonight. And he's probably the youngest guy who is at least four times younger than most of us. Hi, Quinn. Hey. And he's got a beautiful ride. Yeah. Hi. So we've got, um, I'm going to let Paul, we've got Lisa Muller on here. She's turned in an application for membership. So I'm going to let Paul introduce her. And then whoever invited Quinn, I'm going to let you introduce Quinn. Okay, Lisa is looking to transfer into our club. Uh, she doesn't own a bike right now, but she has a motorcycle license. And Lisa, do you want to say a word or two to everybody? <laughs> a word or two. <laughs> uh, hi, how you doing? She's gonna uh, I'm just I'm just looking to join a Rotary Club and kick back for a while and not be a district something or other and club this and whatever and I'm just you know do my thing. Could you briefly tell them what your normal thing is? I'm sorry. Could I briefly tell what? Yeah. A little bit about what you do, your company. Oh, Celebrity Entertainment is a nonprofit organization that was founded uh, in 1997, and we started out doing charity science fiction conventions, and we branched out to do all kinds of charity events, um, engaging celebrities in a variety of uh, events and galas and different things around the country and around the world, and I've raised a little over three quarters of a billion dollars um, over the course of my nonprofit career. I'm 54 years old, so I'm in, I guess, the younger demographic in some cases in Rotary, but <laughs> I'm not sure about this club. Uh, being motorcycle riders, you might not be the older set. I don't know. Um, and I, I work in Los Angeles, and I live in New York, and I love my frequent flyer miles. Uh, what else? I have an incredible Siberian Husky, which you can see in the photo. He's my service dog. Uh, he travels with me everywhere, of course. And um, I'm running the Gaia Project, which is a charity environmental education campaign, which is starting to get really, really busy and really, really exciting. And I can go into more detail on that if I, if I do a, an about me talk or whatever. Sounds great. Thanks. And who's going to introduce Quinn? Hi, everyone. Hello, Blair. I'll introduce Quinn um, as I guess I'm his sponsor. Uh, Quinn is uh, the son of uh, Kenton Acton, a uh, rotary member of the Owen Sound Ontario Canada Club. Uh, and Quinn has uh, been on... I think five IFMR rides with us now. Is it four or five, Quinn? I've been going since five years ago. Five years ago. So it's about five or six rides then. So he's been uh, involved in a lot of our rides. And uh, here he is. What's your bike, Quinn? I have a 2018 Suzuki Boulevard M109. I'm Pretty 21 sharp years too. old. Yeah. Where are you from? I'm from Owen Sound, Ontario. And tell them about your training. 
Which kind of training? Well, your um, apprenticeship. Oh, I'm a apprentice in plumbing with my dad. And I started coming out since I was 16 to the motorcycle. I can say that I followed Quinn for several hours on his bike, and he's a pretty good rider. Thanks. <clears throat> Except for that ticket. <laughs> <laughs> he followed me a lot of the time, and it made me nervous because he's such a good rider. <laughs> Only got lost once. I think we all got lost once. <laughs> no, 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 no. If you have gas, you're not lost. That's probably true. Which kind of gas? <laughs> it's all part of the adventure. Yeah. That really was a nice event. I always enjoy those events. <laughs> you guys all took a lot of pictures, right? I think Jerry took the most. Yeah, he, he always did. does. He took a uh, <clears throat> picture of all the riders with their bike, and if the spice was a spouse, spice or spouse, whatever, um, they were included in it. So they'll be on the IFMR rep website. Yeah, I'll get a link to send out to everybody to, or John's going to, I think. Aren't you, John? <laughs> Me? No, I guess I'm doing it. Um, a link to yeah. um, upload your pictures to. And they'll be in one place. I, I, if I, I can to... actually, if I can actually figure out how to do this and share my screen, Paul, do you think I should show them a picture of my trike that we rode across the country? Whatever you like. It's social hour. Assuming I can figure out how to do this. So down along the bottom of the window, there's a share. Do you see that? I see that. Okay. So screen I want? Uh, I yes. Okay. Can everybody see that? Oh, cool. Oh, all right. Oh, wow. yeah, great. That is a human electric powered vehicle, which wow. requires a motorcycle license in the United States to drive. Oh my God. From Ger it's from Germany. How fast can you go? Uh, 65. No kidding. Wow. Does it have air conditioning? Negative. <laughs> it, so is a, it is a fair weather, it is a fair weather friend. <laughs> How difficult was it to import that? How difficult was it what? To do what? To import it. It is not imported. It actually lives in uh, St. Louis. Did, you didn't bring it over from Germany? Nope. Oh. Cool. How do I shut the share thing off? Oh, here, um, stop share. Okay. Yeah. Jordan, hey, I did that, uh, Paul, without the intern here. Can you believe it? Yeah, you're not as old as you thought you were. <laughs> so it's human powered. You pedal. Human electric. Human electric. It's an electric vehicle that yes. when you pedal, you're not actually powering the vehicle, you're just adding electricity to the battery. You're mm -hmm. charging the dynamo or charging the batteries. Correct. Okay, wow. Does it have solar much you, Is it what? How much, how much do you have to pedal to keep going? Um, you don't, it has a, a charge that lasts, um, I think it had a 300 mile range without charging in a, you know, in a regular charging station. And if you pedaled, you got an additional, I think, 10% of the, of a ride. And the neat thing is that you're never actually out of fuel because you could always just be sitting there parked, pedaling your little butts off if you're stranded somewhere. And then you have another 10 miles and then you have to do that again. And we did not run into that situation, but uh, the owner of this vehicle was telling us about that. So uh, he has extensive experience. He's one of our board members. Does it have solar cells? It does not. It does have does a kick-ass radio, though. <laughs> ah. Jim, does your bike have solar cells? My bike's not electric. Next time you guys get Mike Atkins on 
uh, one of our meetings, ask him about his solar powered V-Strong. He rode it from high level Alberta, which is northern Alberta, to Calgary. From Calgary, he rode it from to middle of Saskatchewan. And then for a third time, third day, he rode it from Saskatchewan to Winnipeg because he couldn't find charging parts in high level Alberta. So he put in a deep cycle battery in the trunk, a solar power on top, and had to turn off his headlights to reduce use of electricity. But he got that thing halfway across the country under solar power. Wow. Cool. When did he do that? Prototype for something in the future? Maybe, eh? When did you do that, Bruce? Uh, three years ago. Oh, wow. He, uh, he was invited to my son's wedding in um, Moose Jaw. And uh, I get this text saying that he wasn't going to make it because he'd broken down in high-level Alberta. And then I get this, a day later, I get this text back that's saying, we've got it fixed. I, I should be there. So, and he had some 10-hour riding days with the solar power. Hmm. What speed? Average speed? Uh, highway miles. Mike, it would probably have been about 120 or 100 miles an hour. No, 100 kilometers an hour. No, Mike would have been 120 kilometers. Yeah. Or 130. Yeah. So, Paul, when's your move to Asheville? I'm probably going to go down around the 10th of August. Still working on getting the bike down there. I thought you decided renting was going to be more uh, advantageous. No, you suggested renting, which is a great idea, but I'd really prefer to ride my bike. Mm. I want my bike down there. <laughs> Everybody knows. Your bike is better than anybody else's bike, right? More you comfortable. Know. And you know it. Linda, do you want me to talk about the banner idea? Yeah, that'd be great. And then I have a picture to share from Jerry. <laughs> Are you all familiar with the idea of rotary trading banners? Yes. Rotary what? Trading, trading banners. Yes. yes. So the idea is you your club has a banner, and when you go, in, in my area, my district, 7090, typically if you're more than 50 miles from your home club, uh, you take your banner and you have a little ceremony at the club you're visiting and you trade banners with them, you bring them back. And, you know, this is all based on land-based clubs. Yep, there you go. You hang the banner on a, on a big uh, belt uh, flag and you show off your banner. In an e-club, it gets a little bit more complicated. So the club that I founded in District 7090, uh, what we did was we made trading banners and we took them to other clubs and we brought other banners back and we took a picture. And so we put them on a, we had a page, a web page where you hang your banner and you could show off all the banners you have. But the neat thing about it is it's just a little bit more ceremony when you're visiting another club, especially Singapore where I teach. Uh, when you go to another country or another state, uh, especially in other countries, they make a big deal out of swapping banners. So I suggested that we ought to consider having a trading banner. And uh, let's see, I'll show my screen. Just a minute while I turn off all the porn. Um, okay, here we go. And so I had a prototype six by nine inch banner made uh, by a company that I buy my flags. I ride in with veterans groups here in the Buffalo area, Niagara. And this is a small banner, uh, six by nine inches, and it's pretty nice. I used our brand new logo. This is all official rotary colors and everything. They use the image that I provided to them. Uh, but it's tiny. The, the challenge is that uh, when you compare it to a regular motorcycle flag, here's my BFW flag, it's small. So I've written back to the company and said, could you make me... Uh, a prototype this size and of course when you get to the bigger size we could put a website or something on it but the thought that I had was I would love I, I do a lot of traveling uh, as many of you do I'm sure and I would love this is my the current one let's see which way is up 
this way. This is the current one. I think they'd be so cool to go to another club and say, I'd like to swap banners with you, and then say, oh, by the way, this is a motorcycle banner that you can put on your motorcycle. Uh, now, it may very well be that our trading banner be, would be a small one, and I want to get a big banner for my bike. Uh, I have uh, several banners. Of, American flag is always one of them. Uh, and I'll fly this the next time I ride. And I'd like to get a full-size banner for this. And I have VFW and American Legion and Vietnam veterans. Uh, but I'd love to con have a consideration of us doing this. And if we did it, it wouldn't cost the club any money because I would whatever banners I got, I'd just pay for. And the club could actually charge a couple extra bucks uh, to put a little money for future, you know, promotional stuff. So that's the only thought. thing. The only thing I'd recommend on that banner of yours is on the wind side, not the the side that's on the stick. Is uh, have like four sets of stitching along there. I know I've gone through about three or four American flags, and I finally got one that was stitched that way, and it's doing all right. Yeah, I can I can talk to them. Um, if you look at this, let me come back and share my screen. I've flown, let me see, where are we here? I've flown this banner for about two years, and it's made by the same company. I can ask them if they can double stitch or quadruple stitch, uh, whatever it is. I mean, whatever the club decides it wants to do, and somebody in the club may know somebody better to make banners. I'm not trying to pitch my company. It's just they work with me to create the, the sample. But this is starting to get a little dog-eared around the edges, but it's two years' worth of riding. Uh, so, you know, they do hold up pretty well. It's pretty heavy material. The only other company I know is Russell Hampton that makes them in small batches. Yeah, I, I haven't tried Russell Hampton. I, I did this one because uh, it has, again, let me go over here. It has the sleeve to go over the device that holds my banner on my bike. So it just I just pop the top off and I can slip this one on in place of one of the other banners or I can buy an extra mount for it. So that's just an idea for the club if they want to think about it. Uh, I may very well, if the club's not interested, I may make a handful for when I'm down in Asheville. I'll try to hit all the clubs in that area and I'll take a few down and hand them out. Nice. I like them. That's my story, and I'm sticking with it. Yeah, it's a good idea, I think. <clears throat> yeah, sign me up. I'd like to have a couple of those. I'll get back to Linda and our incoming president um, when I hear back about a larger size flag, and then the, the board can decide what might, they might be interested in. Maybe there'd be two options, a full-size one, which I would prefer to have on the bike and a smaller one for giving away to people. Okay, sounds like a plan. What else? Oh, I have to share a picture with you from Jerry. So we made his, I don't know, you've heard him talk about his friend Carlton. Yeah, Parnell. Yeah, Carlton Parnell, yeah. Um, they, we made Carlton a, an honorary member. His other club didn't do that and he hasn't been in Rotary for a while. So we made him an honorary member last week or the week before. Nice. And they presented him with the certificate last couple days ago, actually. He's looking pretty good. Yeah, he told me the story is pretty cool. Um, but that's the picture he wanted me to share with you guys. For those of you who don't know Carlton, he's been a long member of the IFMNR, IFMR, and uh, probably one of the original members of the North American chapter. He's hosted many rides down uh, in around the Lions, uh, sorry, the Dragon's Tail. Uh, I've ridden, him with, ridden with him once. Uh, I'm not sure who hosted that ride or where it was anymore, but uh, he's a very, very nice Rotarian, very nice man. He became, he became sick with cancer about two years ago, and uh, Jerry's traveled down to meet him a number of times since then. He's actually put on a lot of weight. Oh, you know. There you go. 
What else we got? So, John, are you going to talk about your ride at all? Let me unmute. Um, I, I was very pleased with how the ride went. I thought things were greatly enhanced by uh, Amy from the CVB, who made a lot of arrangements for us. And uh, they're going to be using our photographs in their promotion of the Windy Nine. And uh, also Melissa at the hotel, although I did write her and tell her that the Shady restaurant was, don't, don't uh, give that to groups anymore. I didn't, uh, I sat next to Bob Schreiner and he and I agreed that it was just adequate and that the service was slow. Uh, but uh, the weather was good. The riders were good. Uh, we only had minor issues. Uh, I think it's an area that most people have not been to. Uh, it was just a good ride. That it was. It was a great ride. How did Polio Plus do? Well, so far I'm up to about 4250. Uh, I sent out another supplication to all the clubs in my district yesterday. Uh, and I think I'm going to get some more money from my district. Uh, if you all want to write the clubs in your home club district, again, I, I know Linda did hers, I think. Uh, I'm jealous of Lisa. What'd she say? Three quarters of a billion dollars? We're not going to quite make that. <laughs> but, uh, you know, every little bit counts. So. Uh, I will be sending this off probably tomorrow just to get it in for this year. Anybody you know else? That, have that three quarters of a billion is a uh, career long and many different organizations, not just rotary. <laughs> it's, so I got a couple of years to work on it. Yeah, I think so. The only problem I had with the ride is that John set the bar so high that other rides are going to have trouble meeting it. Yep. It's going to be a I, tough I, I, I appreciate that. I don't know about that, but I've been on some good rides. I know well, after, the, after the Atlantic Convention, we had some good rides. Bob Schreiner usually has a good ride if you can keep up with him. My wife and I were on the ride, and we enjoyed it. I also had the privilege of riding uh, a pre-ride with uh, John on, I guess it was Thursday of that week, and then we did that same ride again on Saturday. What was interesting was that uh, somehow I was leading a small group at the tail end. They got way ahead after we left the restaurant, and I took uh, folks on a ride that nobody else had. <laughs> That's All what Jim was talking about, I think. That intentional or otherwise, uh, Dave? Um, let's just say that um, my bike took me where it wanted to go, pointed in a ah. direction, and hell, I followed it. Yeah. No harm, no foul. You got it. I think the worst that we had is uh, on the first day when we stopped at that gas station, somebody dropped their bike from the standstill. Uh -huh. I, know what, I think we've all done that. Uh, it, it, it wasn't quite from a standstill. Oh, I, I was not privy to it. Was that you, Chris? That was me. No, it wasn't me that dropped the bike, but it, the, the individual that was involved was not quite at a standstill. <laughs> well, again, we've all done that, but no deaths, no no injuries. I know, um, uh, oh. Um, no Tupperware was harmed. Yep. <laughs> Glen Glenda had a minor problem uh, after the first day's ride. She said her bike was running funny, and Amy had made arrangements with the local Power Sports slash Harley dealer, first in, first out for our group. They worked on her bike for, I think, two hours, replaced an exhaust gasket and the spark plugs, and I think she wound up paying something like $114. Yeah. I, I would say that was an excellent price. Right. Very cheap. And, and they got it fixed. She was on the road. Uh, well, she met us up at the, uh, um, Restaurant. The, 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 yeah, triple nickel mm -hmm. and, uh, Kenton accompanied her to make sure everything was all right. And it was an uneventful, uh, ride home for Glenda. Was it Quinn? It wasn't too bad. Went through downtown Detroit. 
Oh, okay. But Glenda's bike rode or ran well all the way home? Yep. Good. No problems. So tell us There's... about downtown to try it. <laughs> Pretty sketchy. Yeah. <laughs> Not where you want to be. No. Nope. Hey, Quinn, it's good to have you on the meeting. <laughs> Thanks. Did you get my email, Chris, about the uh, with the links? I did. I'm trying okay. to make a decision whether or not I'm going to rent or I'm going to make the drive. So right. I'll probably go through that decision tree this weekend. I'm trying to persuade my wife, but if she comes, she'll likely fly to Toronto and I'll pick her up in Toronto. There you go. Yeah, that works. Or if you want a trailer, you can leave a trailer here at uh, my residence. I'm halfway between the first and the last hotel. Oh, well, that's, that's an opportunity as well. Yeah, that's a very nice offer. Thank you. This is in September, right? That's correct. And we're going to see the uh, elk antlers and... I hope we can make arrangements to fit Eric's farm uh, into the tour. I don't see why not. That was a pretty interesting fella. He is. He is. Bruce, I don't know if you noticed, but after we left uh, Jimbo's and uh, we, we hit, I think it was 56, we passed a sign that said moose. Oh, I did not notice. I, I thought about stopping in there because we didn't see any moose on the ride up with your place. That was the the Collingwood wet one you're talking about? That would be the one. Uh, no, there's no moose in our area. No, that, that's just wrong. <laughs> <laughs> about elk? No elk in our area either. How about, How about optimists? optimists? Uh, maybe, maybe moose on the northern part of uh, the ride on, in September. But Lions? Which? Lions? I'm just thinking through all the, the nonprofit groups. Lions, um, tigers, and bears. No, no, this is North Country. They're deer. <laughs> we are going we are gonna be riding on part of the lion's tail and visiting Which the lion lion's head. Which lion would that be? And visiting the Lion's Head uh, Rotary Club for uh, a, a brunch or a snack, coffee and a snack on the uh, first morning. What, what, what lion's tail would that be, Bruce? You've not heard the promotions about uh, the route that's just uh, up in the Bruce Peninsula? The lion's I've tail? promotions about the route. I'm curious about the lions. Oh, I don't know then. <laughs> Bruce, there are people in the chat asking more about the ride and where it is. Can you give a little more detail? Sure. It's starting in Owen Sound, uh, Canada, um, Ontario, Canada, um, September the 13th. It's a Friday. Uh, we'll be leaving about 8.30, 9 o'clock Friday morning. We're going to be heading north through the Bruce Peninsula up along the shores of Georgian Bay. We will be taking the Chichimon Ferry uh, from Tobermory to... Tobermory to South Bay Mouth, which is on the Manitoulin Islands. Touring around the Manitoulin Islands for a little bit. Uh, staying in Espanola, which is east-west of Sudbury. From there, there we're going to be heading over to North Bay. Uh, and then from North Bay down the eastern shores of uh, Georgian Bay back to Collingwood. All the information, all the booking information for hotels and ferry uh, are uh, uh, on the IFMR website and our own club's website. Uh, if you're looking to book, if you are um, even tentatively thinking about coming but still not sure, my suggestion is that you book the ferry first. You can always bow out of it. You can always cancel your, your uh, reservation. But that is limited space. It's first come, first serve. By the way, this is, this is all about two and a half hours northwest of Toronto. 
Any other questions about the ride? Uh, when will it be over? Um, start Never. <laughs> we start Friday. How many days is it? We'll be back in Collingwood on Sunday, the, okay. uh, the 15th. Okay. And you're about four hours north of Toronto, is that right? <laughs> no, it's about um, two no. Two, just over two hours from the airport. An hour and a half from the airport. Two hours, yeah. Gotcha. Well, I am I on? Okay. I went to the BMW MOS rally in Lebanon, Tennessee and had a great time. There was about 6,000 BMW riders and uh, Lebanon was great. Um, then I rode over to the Blue Ridge Parkway and the Dragon's Tail. Never had done that before and it was a lot of fun. So we had a great time. And did a lot of riding and saw a lot of friends. I didn't see uh, the gentleman from South Carolina. I forget his name. Harold. Uh, what was his name? Harold. Okay. Or uh, uh, Terry. Jordan Clem. Uh, the black gentleman. I, I don't remember his name. I'm sorry. Harold, the Harold. one that said he was going to the BMW. Uh, Right. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Harold Hill. Harold, yeah. No, I didn't I didn't see him. Um and the young lady that joined that was supposed to be having a booth. I didn't see that, so I'm not sure she showed up, but uh, it was a good time and um you know, it's a great group of people. So for all BMW riders, um try to make it next year it'll be in montana so john don't schedule your ride next year during that ride hey they could have come <laughs> that we could have, or we could have crashed their party we could have one of the things that colleen commented on and, and actually jerry and rory and and um Judy came back to our house after the ride this weekend. But one of the things we commented on was the, how nice it was that all the bikes were fairly quiet. We didn't have anybody with the wide open pipes. So true, yeah. Kind of nice. Say that again. And Quinn? Was Quinn's quiet? I wasn't, I didn't get to hear his. He, he's our young guy. Yep. Yep. <laughs> You just make the uh, Harley riders ride in the back. <laughs> we couldn't hear Quinn's bike over all the noisy gold wings. <laughs> <laughs> but one of the most interesting uh, things on the ride prep is uh, when the Doherty's and I were out we on the triple nickel, uh, <laughs> we crested this one hill. And of course, it was two lanes. In the left-hand lane was this huge dog just laying down. <laughs> and when I first saw it, I thought it was a bear. And that thing just stood up and said, you know, what? I'm, I'm glad he wasn't on our side. When I came through, it was just standing there looking at me. It was a big dog, as you say. I didn't know what the heck was going on. Uh, oh. I did, during my other uh, prep ride, saw several turkey. Um, you looking in the mirror? Yeah, I was looking in the mirror, but I'm talking about the wild turkey. Thank you very much, Chris. <laughs> um, one deer that ran out in front of us. Uh, the month before when I was with Jeff, I saw a red fox on the triple nickel. Saw a groundhog running across the road, too, right after you went by. Did you? Yeah. You had a close call with a deer there. On the was it this Friday ride? I think it was the Friday ride. Yeah. How how far in front of you was he when he crossed, or she, or it? Um, I I didn't take time to measure. I was busy doing uh, avoidance technique. I'd say I don't know fifty feet. 
Yeah, I thought it was closer than that. I, I don't know. It's bad memory gone. <laughs> I think we're talking about two different deer because you had one in front of you when we were on the pre-ride. Yeah. But he was pretty far ahead, that pre-ride. Yeah. So, Bruce, um, for this ride in September, renting a motorcycle is an option? I have always been told you, you can't ride or rent in Ontario because of insurance reasons. I'm on another Facebook site uh, that asked that very question <coughs> Monday, and they came up with a number of links. Uh, Har there is a Harley dealership in Oakville, which is west of Toronto. Uh, that will um, rent for you, rent to you. Kenton is actually going to go check out the local Harley dealership for me to see if if you guys can rent it, will they ship it to the Harley dealership in Owen Sound for you? Hmm. That would save you going from the airport to Oakville, then riding up to Owen Sound. I think if you're a member of Hog. That's included in your membership, at least in the U.S., but you got to be a Harley owner. I have no idea. Uh, I gave I gave Chris, uh, yeah, I gave Chris the links there on uh, Monday. If anybody else wants those links, I can forward them on, and you can investigate it yourself. Hey, Bruce, can you send those to me, and I'll put them up with the um, listing on the IFMR website. Certainly, and in Certainly. and in Facebook. That's a good idea. I, I have no idea if the links work or what the rates are or what the insurance, uh, um, any if there are any issues. I, I have no idea. So I'll, I'll post the links and you guys can investigate them yourself. Okay. Hey, Glenda, how's the new job going? Uh, I start next Tuesday. So uh, Tuesday. Uh, Tuesday morning, we announced it to everyone that I was moving on to a new role and I would be gone by this Friday. So there's lots of shocked people, lots of shocked clients. And um, I just started going through uh, files tonight and there's a whole lot of memories um, in managing a branch for 19, well, more, more than that, 22 years of managing. Um, I was going through a file with all the customer complaints that I've had since then. And man, I have forgotten about most of them, but <laughs> there's some interesting times. <laughs> you couldn't have Every had any more. Stops. No. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's a pretty emotional week for me. I have to say it's i uh, I'm excited about the new role, but it's pretty bittersweet leaving uh, somewhere that you've been for all those years. Paul, how was your visit with your high school friend? Very interesting. Uh, he and his wife are art instructors at Indiana University in Indianapolis. And uh, I haven't seen him for, since 1976 uh, when I was at their wedding. So it was nice to get caught up. My wife drove to Indianapolis to join me. So she drove all the way out and all the way back just to be there for a couple of days. And it's a nice town, by the way. I've never been to Indianapolis before. And of course, they took us to all the cultural stuff, all the museums and everything. So, Paul, did, did, did you stop by Athens on your way to Indianapolis? That was just a layover. I decided I, I had um, a little bit of time open and I decided to go, you know, a couple hundred miles out of my way to stop in Athens on my way to Indianapolis from Buffalo. Yeah. How cool is that? Thank you. What that was. And I'm glad I did because I wanted to meet you guys. It's kind of hard to bond with you here on the screen, you know. We had, a, we had a good time. We went to a planetarium, saw a show, went to a museum. He showed me his artwork. Uh, they actually founded a museum in Akron, Ohio, years ago, 20-some-odd uh, hmm. years ago. Uh, and then they've been teaching in Indianapolis since then. About to retire, December they're retiring. Nice. After I left Athens, I went to Bristol. I went to the Motorcycle Sport Touring Association star event in uh, Bristol, Virginia. I got to tour the racetrack. Bristol, Tennessee, there's a guy named Bruno Smith that owns um, 
eight different NASCAR tracks. So I guess he's got a couple of bucks. But I got to go up and see his um, sky, sky room so they can watch the race from up above. It was pretty cool. It's a very interesting tour. Well, that's cool. I got to ride the new Gold Wings, too, both of them, which was fun. What did you think? Well, it's hard to justify another $15,000, you know. Nice bike, but it's a lot of money. Yeah, it is a lot of money. But they do ride sweet. <laughs> they do. You're right. They do. It's a whole, it's a whole different ride. I was, yes, amazed when I, I was amazed when I rode Rory's over the weekend. Maybe after a few years, after they depreciate it a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> You mean if Chris buys one and rides it for a couple, three years, you might buy it from him? I might. <laughs> yeah, I might. You take good care of your bike, Jim. I, I was impressed with how nice yours looks. Uh, it's getting old. It's getting a little long in the tooth. It's 12 years old, but it runs good. It was. I really, I fell in love with it again after that ride this weekend. It was. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. It, it was a great ride. John, you did a super job pulling all that together. Thank you. Very kind of you to say. He wasn't being kind. He was being honest. Yep. The four-way test, number one. Chris, how did you put up with those vagabonds that went to your house after the ride? Oh, you know what? They were pretty good. In fact, they uh, in the morning, they even stripped their beds and brought their sheets down so we could easily wash them. So they're pretty good guests. <laughs> oh, well, that's good to know if I ever stop at your house. Yeah. <laughs> know what to do. Know well, what the protocol is. It, it worked out pretty well. We, we, uh, we, we got back into Charlotte at about 3.30 on Sunday and then we I live in a neighborhood that has a restaurant in the neighborhood so we walked over to the restaurant for dinner and the next morning everybody was up early I made them breakfast and uh, they were on their way out to see Carlton by about 8 15 in the morning yes Uber. yeah sounds good yeah so they were good guests <laughs> Ken, Ken uh, Quinn and I threw um, some interesting parts for it. <laughs> we got off the we got off the main road and made some wrong turns, and uh, it was very interesting. Kenton said there, all the bike gangs and stuff. He never looked sideways. He just kept looking straight. <laughs> you must have been around seven mile or something. I don't know. <laughs> I don't even remember lending you my GPS. <laughs> <laughs> Jennifer and I had a heck of a time getting out of Athens, of all places. I kept going around on the wrong way. Oh, I wanted an a, a east to west road to be north south, and that totally confused me. I think it must have taken them, what, a couple hours to get to um, Carlton's place from your house? Yeah, it was about three hours and 15 minutes, but I know that they were planning a couple of stops along the way. In fact, one of the big highlights of their drive from here over to Carlton's was going to be to stop by Aunt B's hometown. Whose hometown? Aunt B from um, uh, the Andy, Andy Griffin. Griffin show. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Francis Bouvier. Yeah, her her uh, adopted hometown is Siler City, which is right outside of Asheboro. Asheboro's where the uh, zoo is for North Carolina. Uh, when I went on that training uh, with that guy that spoke to us a couple months ago, we actually stopped in the town that was the um, influence for Mayberry. 
And it consists Mount, of like two buildings. Mount Airy, North Carolina. Mount Airy. Oh, yeah. I mean, if it's where, uh, if it's the same place, it was like two buildings, both of them abandoned. Yeah. That was Jim Ford. And What'd you it, say? That was Jim Ford is a guy that talked to us. Yeah. That's the class that uh, John took. It, it was some good training. Uh, nothing terribly new, but it was just good to have practically one-on-one -on -one instruction. Cash only. Yeah. I can read between the lines. <laughs> so what's everybody drinking tonight? Hey, Connor. Beer. Scotch. Yep, I've got a scotch. Water. Water. I'm boring. Bourbon. You've been busy riding a bicycle, haven't you, Linda? I have. I'm going to ride a little bit more tomorrow. I'm going to donate my miles tomorrow to another gal. Does, does everybody know how much money Linda has raised through her bicycle efforts? No. Oh, brag, Linda, brag. $6,135 as of oh. yesterday. Oh. All for uh, childhood cancer research. That's huge. Yeah. It was good riding. I rode, I did six, a little over 60 miles on Saturday. Determined to get those last 57 miles in. The refineries are really beautiful twice on a ride. Mm -hmm. Now you just got to get back to the bicycle with a motor on it. Yep, that's next. <laughs> what, what group are you riding with, Linda? What's that? What group are you riding with? Uh, it's, called the, it's called the Great Cycle Challenge. It's the can Children's Cancer Research Fund. It's like the fifth year they've done this. Um, and there were like 80,000 riders. And people did anywhere from, I mean, one guy, I know there's a company involved. He raised $30,000, so there's got to be at least one company involved. And most of them are, are just individual riders. Some people form teams. Um, it was just something different. I, so I came across it in April and thought, I'm going to do it. 80,000 80, riders? 80,000 riders that we've raised uh, total over $14 million. That's yeah. phenomenal. Yeah. But they said 38 kids die from cancer every week. So it's like, that's 38 kids too many. So near and dear to my heart, kids. That was a good, good thing. I'll do it again next year if I'm around. It was good. If you're around? You might be traveling, you know. You never know. Well, you might be on a motorcycle ride. And I might be on a motorcycle ride, too. But it was, it was fun. We've gotten the electric bikes, so it made it a little bit easier to ride. But probably wouldn't have done 400 miles on a regular bike. That's amazing. <coughs> it was amazing. It's a good deal. Oh, John's got to leave. You can't stay for a board meeting, quick board meeting? I gave you my vote. Okay. All right, are we, we're not meeting next week, are we? No meeting next week because of the 4th of July, but we'll be back on the 10th, and everybody should be on that. The district governor visit is that week, 10th of July. Bruce, 4th of July is when we colonists broke away from the motherland. Yes, I'm aware of that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm aware. Were you there? Uh, no. But our incoming uh, district governor is still a British citizen. And he's trying to get us to speak the Queen's English. It's not working. Huh. Which All right. See you all in a couple of weeks. John, all which right. John. John, which district? Uh, 7390. Uh, your home district. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. See you in a couple of weeks. Bye, Bye John. John. Have a good fourth. I'm going to bail too. You're going to bail too? See you guys in a couple of weeks. All hey, right. <clears throat> I guess Happy that's 4th of wait, July, everybody. Happy Love Canada that. Day. <laughs> that's July 1st. That's right. Come soon. Come sooner. Cheers. All right. Have a good Bye one. First. See everybody later. See ya.
Okay.